Hello once again, Indie Warriors, and welcome back to I Dream of Indie Games. My name's Old Gamer Joe, and because you enjoyed our last list so much, I'm coming back at you with 10 more excellent-looking Metroidvania games that we'll be releasing in 2024. And apologies, I sound like complete garbage. I am a little bit sick, but that doesn't stop me from bringing a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. As always, we thank you for supporting independent content. If you want to gain Discord access, early ad-free shows, shoutouts at the end of every video we produce, and even free games depending on the tier, head on over to patreon.com slash I dream of indie games bring indies a voice and join the campaign for indie game visibility also be sure to show okay Nia some love at twitch.tv slash I dream of indie games she's live every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern your community is waiting for you with all that out of the way wow my head sounds really weird listening to myself right now with this cold let's get into these metroidvanias that we are looking forward to in 2024 all right first up is a self-described psychedelic metroidvania that players won't need to wait all that much longer to experience for themselves. We're talking about Ultros. And no, it's not the origin story of the adorable evil purple octopus from Final Fantasy VI. This is a brand new game. The story certainly seems a little bit bonkers, and the color palette features intense pinks and greens with lots of organic material swaying about. Animations are lovely with insane creature designs. You could almost describe the look of Ultros as some sort of abstract painting brought to life. After your ship shits the bed, you find yourself on a journey to take down the nasty demon named Ultros. The game takes place in a land known as the Sarcophagus, which is host to aliens and other oddities. This unique looking spin on the Metroidvania genre has caught my interest, and good news, we won't have to wait all that much longer to play it. Ultros will be available on both the PC platform and PlayStation consoles soon. Moving on from that Ultros combo! Any Killer Instinct fans? No? Alright. Nine Souls is the next game we're going to talk about, which currently has a demo available on Steam. Taking heavy inspiration from Sekiro, this game is rich with Eastern Asian history, and you'll play as a warrior who is tasked with defeating nine different souls. Where the Sekiro influence is really said the show is in the combat system, which involves lots of deflecting attacks and using talismans to inflict damage. The game will of course have tons of bosses to take down like any good Metroidvania, and a large map to explore broken up into different regions. This game comes from from the folks that brought us the excellent horror game Detention, which was really all I needed to hear because I love that game. While this is quite a departure for them, so far the game looks like a wonderful mix of action and platforming, so I have confidence it's going to be great. While this next game doesn't have a concrete release date just yet, it is slated for 2024. Bow, Path of the Teal Lotus, honestly reminds me a bit of the last game we discussed, Nine Souls, with its art style. Rooted in Japanese folklore, the platforming in this one looks fast and frantic, with some lovely hand-drawn visuals and animations. All of the usual Metroidvania features appear to be present here, including bosses and a huge map to explore, along with attacks and magical relics to be discovered. There are even teas for you to drink which will allow for your character to transform and use even more types of attacks. Bow Path of the Teal Lotus should be on your wish list if you love this genre as much as I do. Up next is Earthblade, a Metroidvania which features a strong female protagonist which isn't a huge surprise as it comes to us from the creators of indie classic Celeste. This time you'll control the young girl Navoa. There aren't a ton of story details out there just yet, but the art is looking just as sharp as you would expect, and we know how talented this team is, so I have really no concerns whatsoever about this one coming out awesome. This game will have a strong focus on combat, it would seem, though platforming will still be a huge aspect of the game as you swing from ropes and land on ledges, kind of like Celeste. While jumping, double jumping, dodging, and striking, Earthblade will hopefully nail all of the fundamentals down and end up being one of the best releases this year. That is, assuming it doesn't get delayed, which I hope not. Moving along, we enter the virus-infested world of Biogun, a new Metroidvania that has a lovely cartoon art style that seems to flow beautifully based off of early footage. Interesting with the story here, you aren't on your usual quest to save humanity, you're trying to save dogs with a vaccine. Biogun seems to be quite a bit more Metroid than Castlevania through its shooting mechanics, however the map appears to be wide open and full of secrets to be discovered. The developer is promising a lot of weapons and customizable gameplay through the use of nano chips. Heck, there will even be side quests available, so there should be no shortage of things to do when the game releases later in 2024. We now turn to a smaller budgeted project without question, but I still think it looks pretty good. 
Sci-fi fans, take note of Age of Errata, which comes to us from developer Vinciware. Age of Errata has solid looking pixel art and five different planets that players will be able to explore. Sure, it might be a little bit janky looking so far, it is super indie after all, but we do love supporting even the smallest of projects and wanted to shout this ambitious undertaking out. Even if it can't have the fanciest visuals, hopefully the gameplay and the map design is enjoyable enough. We shall see when this one releases this year. Now onto something a bit different, though surprisingly, not the first underwater fish based metro Metroidvania game that's existed. Anyone play Pronti? Shout out to Pronti. Pretty cool little game. Tough to control. Anyways, we're not talking about Pronti here. We're talking about the Swordfish Knight of the Deep. You'll control a literal swordfish taking down all the nasty sea creatures that stand in your way. I honestly get a bit of a Neko the Dolphin vibe from this, even though I recognize they're very different games. The ocean appears to be quite vast as you would expect, full of different weapons, quests, mini games, and more. Take a deep dive with Swordfish Knight of the Deep very soon. Certainly worth adding to your wish list. I hope it's a good catch. I really like the name of this next one for some reason. It is Nara Facing Fire. Now that's an intense name. I dig it. Very video game like. Take down the Valgardians in yet another Metroidvania, which promises a very large map with secrets to uncover, fast frantic combat, and of course, big bad bosses that you want dead. I really love the look of the main character, and honestly the traversal looks awesome as you grapple about from ledge to ledge. Gorgeous art style, smooth frame rate, and spells and secrets await players who are patient enough for its release in 2024. Apparently this one started as a Kickstarter project, so it does have some fan funding involved as well. I must have missed that unfortunately. Anyways. Marco, Beyond the Brave is our next release, a game that's been brewing for quite some time now. I've known about it for quite a few years. Silent Signs did play the demo for this one a while back on the channel where she battled a vampire boss, dying multiple times over and over again, but eventually did beat that vampire. Yes, this one does seem like it will be challenging, but I do quite like the art style and so far mechanically it's coming along very well. There should be a good variety of different environments for players to traverse, and I think the Slavic inspiration is really cool. Let's see how the story and gameplay come together, hopefully this year, as the game should be nearing the final stretch. Hey, thanks so much for making it to the end of another list. We greatly appreciate you. Last release I want to shout out here. I'm uh, gonna need my pen and paper for this one. No, actually, I should just need a pencil. We're talking about the perfect pencil. While it may not sound like it, the perfect pencil is an exploration of the inner workings of the mind. The quirky offbeat humor and style looks pretty charming and the inventory system, platforming, and the map design all seem really well done. I'm all about the art style the developer has chosen, but it's definitely the story that has me the most interested. Good news here as well, there is a demo available so you can get a taste of the wackiness for yourself. That ought to put some lead in the old pencil. And that's gonna do it, folks. We hope you enjoyed this taste of 10 more Metroidvania games that we'll be releasing in 2024. Thank you, as always, for supporting independent content. Head on over to patreon.com slash games where you will gain Discord access, early ad-free shows, shoutouts at the end of every video we produce, and even free games, depending on the tier. Twitch.tv slash games. Okay, Nia is there every Wednesday. She can't wait to hang out with you all. And that's gonna do it for me. I will see you on the channel for more great indie gaming content. Things are ramping up.